I think people are pissed off because they want the world to make sense. And if he's natural, it doesn't make sense to a lot of people. It's impossible. Is it? Or is it so possible that your head is spinning like a top? I think the fitness industry is self-aware enough at this point to realize how much of a joke this is. Joke? What, a joke? You think this is funny? Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Michael Hearn really is natty for life. Now, I know a lot of guys don't necessarily believe that. Of course he's not natural. Does anyone still think he's natural? Does, is there even one person on earth that thinks this guy's natural? I believe that, I believe that Michael Heron is natural. There are a lot of people that actually think this guy's natty and it's just f insane to me that this is even a topic of conversation still. Mike O'Hearn. <laughs> Mr. Duck Eggs himself. Oh yeah, I'm big and strong like Superman because I eat duck eggs. Get the f*** out of here. Who believes this man doesn't take steroids? They nickname him Mike Tren. I call him Michael Hearn. I believe he's natty for life. I'm going to give you all the reasons. It's not just one reason. It's, it's like if you take them all and combine them, they're like, he has to be natural. It just makes way more sense. Anyway, this is a lively debate I had with Savo. He's an independent filmmaker. He's got a web series called Save a Ho. I'll link it in the description below. It's pretty funny. He's pro steroid. I'm natty for life. We have a debate. I give the reasons. Let me know in the comments section if you think he's natty or not. And by the end of the video, if you don't, let me know if I convinced you and changed your mind. You're going to want to make sure to stay until the end. I have the Hail Mary defense. No one's ever brought this up. It makes a lot of sense. But whether that's true or not, if you take all the evidence I'm going to present, and I'll put them in chapters below if you want to jump to different segments, but if you take all that combined... He basically has to be natural. So anyway, please help support the channel by hitting the like button, subscribing, sharing the video. Check me out on Instagram. I get fitness and martial arts related tips. And with that said, let's get on to this lively debate. Yeah, let's just, I guess let's just jump into this. Um, you're going to be the voice of the people, the voice of reason. But essentially, why don't you think Michael Hearn is natty? Oh, you just want me to answer that up front? I, I want to give a lot of context to this, if you don't mind, actually. Okay. I mean, so basically I have like all my little bullet points and I'm going to go over. There's so much evidence that as I was researching this, because I was like always open to the possibility, right? Like anything is possible, but the more research I do and the more I think about it, it almost makes more sense for him to be natural than not natural. You know how hard it's getting just to tell people I know you? And most people are going to think that's like the stupidest statement ever. But by the end of the video, maybe yourself too, you'll think it actually might make more sense that he's natural as opposed to not based on all this stuff. And I'm open to your interpretation. I'm really curious about your interpretation. But this time, Viking Samurai, you've really picked a perfect specimen. Like you've really picked no homo, like the most perfect looking man that you can think of to claim that he's natural. It's one thing with Sly, and then we go into like, maybe he was natural for Rocky two, but not Rocky three, and it varies. It's different when it comes to other guys, but Michael Hearn, you, you've arguably picked the most perfect looking bodybuilding uh, specimen as far as size and as far as aesthetics that you could possibly think of. Uh, so I wanna add the context to this, that when you have a discussion like this, is somebody natural or not? There's, there's a lot of, there's sort of something it stands on. And what it stands on is, are we saying this or is a person like me saying something like this because I want to shit all over Mike O'Hearn or it's coming from a negative standpoint. So I want to address that first, that it's not. I'm pro steroid. I, I personally believe that it's a mistake that our society has turned a sports cheating issue into somewhat of a moral issue. So we know in bodybuilding, it's generally acceptable to take steroids for a professional bodybuilding show and more bodybuilding shows than not don't test for it. They may test for the natural ones, but the pro stage, it's acceptable to take steroids. It's a part of the sport. It's acceptable to take steroids if you're a part of the Arnold Classic. So in that context, in the world where juicing is okay, which is the world I live, I live in. I mean, I cycle from time to time and I, I think these drugs could be a great benefit to people. I don't think it's an issue. So let's start with that, that I'm not the guy that's like, oh, this guy only looks like that because he juices. But the second thing is, 
is we've been so lied to. This is a serious point. We have been so lied to and so deceived as far as what a natural physique could look like and what are the natural limits of a physique. I remember telling my aunt, I'm going to do a cycle this summer. And she goes, oh, you don't want to take a cycle here. I have Arnold Schwarzenegger's book. Why don't you read that? And I'm like, that's a steroid user. You know what I mean? So we've been so fooled from the jump since the beginning of the fitness industry. When it was born, we have been shown nothing but perfect looking physiques. And it's always been such a dirty swept under the rug kept secret that most of the, the industry uses steroids that it created this misconception where we can't tell. And on top of it, if you've never done a cycle, then you really can't tell. So most of our favorite guys that are aesthetically perfect, uh, always pumped, always vascular, always shredded in the public eye. We've been told that they're natural. Like your papa. He ate his spinach every day. <laughs> so it skews the perception. I mean, when you tell me you think Mike O'Hearn's natural, you, you tell me you think a certain guy's natural. I'm I'm wondering where's your starting point for that understanding? You know what I mean? Because who else do you think might be natural? That's been a that's been a closet steroid user because it's not socially acceptable to talk about in the public eye for some time. Well, here's the interesting thing. So there's not so much the stigma nowadays that there used to be. And I actually like that a lot of guys are more open with it, right? I think uh, Rich Piana, who is one of Michael Hearn's friends who passed away, unfortunately, like he was really open with it. And I think people started getting a lot more open with it. You could almost go all the way back to 2000. I was like there for that transition, lifting weights, bodybuilding in the 90s in high school. And everybody was naive. It was like, they never talked about it. The muscle mags like flex or muscle and fitness. Nobody ever talked about that. Right. But Michael Hearn, for whatever reason, would still claim natty, even though it was kind of like an unspoken thing, but he would even make fun and say, Hey, these guys should do it natural like me. But no one really even thought at least me as a teenager that, you know, Mr. Olympia, Dorian Yates, like I thought he was natural. So I was naive, but they never talked about that until Bill Phillips came out with like muscle media 2000 and he kind of like ripped the curtain back. And then you had stories with guys getting interviewed and they were kind of like going the opposite direction of like, no, everybody's on, on stuff. Everybody the thing about Mike O'Hearn is it's, it's very interesting that you picked a guy that is, has such a first, first of all, like you take the perfect V taper, the perfect wide shoulders, the perfect size and aesthetics. You know how we talk about Sly probably went for aesthetics because he couldn't join the size game. Sure. Well, here's a guy that has dominated both. And you just begin to ask yourself, what is the likelihood that one of the most perfect looking physiques in the business was developed naturally? And the thing that I don't think people take into account is that it's not about some jackass sitting on online jealous that he can't have the same gains as Michael Hearn. Like, it's fucking believable. I, I trained my whole fucking life and I can't look like this guy because he's probably on a stack of juice. It's not about that. It's about what does that person have at stake? You know, famously, there was a guy, I think the face of hydroxy cut, correct me if I'm wrong. It was something similar to that. If I'm off the face of hydroxy cut in the early 2000s did a documentary piece for Chris Bell where he said, I do take steroids. I've been taking steroids my whole life, but it's up to the public to decide whether or not they think I only look like this because of hydroxy cut, which is the product that I'm paid to promote or whether or not I might be using something else for assistance. He was fired a day later. So mm -hmm. that's the thing. How many endorsements do these people have? How, where do they make their money? I mean, are, are they on a magazine cover? Are they in magazines promoting protein powder? Who are their sponsors? And all of that is is horrible for business, I mean, even though like weed is legal in most in most states these days in the country. Th that's still it. It depends who your sponsor is. It depends who's backing you. It depends whose product are you representing? It, it, it's still stigmatized to that extent that I don't think it's a great idea for the person that is the, the face of your product to be like, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Everybody's on a little bit of something. So it's about more than being like a deceitful piece of shit. It's, it's not like that at all. It's just it's not talked about for a reason. It's it's not business friendly. Yeah. I mean, that's a valid point, especially with all the supplements they're trying to sell people. But with Michael Hearn, he exhibits none of the known side effects. So he doesn't have oily or acne prone skin. He doesn't have bitch tits. He's never had gyno surgery. He doesn't have the scars. He's not bald. His traps and shoulders, which usually have more androgen receptors, guys just got huge traps and shoulders were on there on stuff. Now his are impressive, but they're not crazy even though he's like deadlifting, I don't know, seven, 800 pounds, you think his, 
he was on roids, his traps would probably be up to his ears. Also, even though he's very vascular, like not beyond what I think somebody could do normally. Like I'm even pretty vascular, like as a natural guy. I mean, I this lighting that. might be shitty, but the thing is, he's not crazy vascular. He's vascular about probably the best you can get when you're older, your skin's a little thinner, you're ripped, you're pumped. You could probably do that naturally, in my opinion. He's not crazy ass vascular like Stallone or anything, but he's pretty damn vascular, but not not to an unnatural state. And then um, fertility, fertility. Like he's had a kid recently. His kid's only a couple okay. years old. So he he basically conceived at like 50. You think if you're taking steroids or stuff like that, messing with your hormones for 40 years, Depends. you may not have a kid at 50. So I'm, I'm going to disagree with a couple of things. Um, and, and also remember, this is coming from a, a steroid user. So I, I can speak to a few of these things. The oily skin, the acne, the scars, the, the gyno, this, this is something that you generally see with amateurs. I mean, this is the kind of thing that like you, you, you could see me fuck up with because I'm young and I, I don't have all the assistance I need. And I, maybe I don't have as much cycle theory knowledge as some do. Uh, there's things that you could take to control the acne. That, that's something that me and my buddy that I'm cycling with talk about all the time is like, you know, we should bring in some antibiotics or something. I think Rick Drayson talked about in the, back in the day, the doctors that would prescribe steroids to him and Arnold and everybody would also hand out tetracycline for free. That's something that combats hormonal acne and it does it from within the system. And that's got to be from uh, my assumption would just be that, especially with that Rick Drayson comment would lead me to believe is that that is probably part of a bodybuilding show prep protocol because especially when you take something like D-ball. I mean, D-ball is really known for producing acne and oily skin and all the rest of it. That's kind of like the mother of side effects. That's why I won't touch it. And they were big on that in the 70s, but you never saw Arnold, Lou Ferrigno. You never saw any of these guys with acne. So that's more of a, an amateurish thing. I will agree with the traps. That's something, even as a guy who's never cycled, you seem to understand pretty good. I do what I can for my traps but I don't annihilate my traps. I don't have fantastic traps naturally. Uh, if you bring me back on in four weeks, just because I'm starting another cycle right now, if you were to bring me back on in four weeks, my traps, you're right. There is something about it. The traps and the shoulders seem to blow up whether you touch them or not. If, if you do focus on them, great. But they, there is something about that, that they, they seem to fill up when you're on a cycle. I, I don't know what that's about, but you were very perceptive in knowing that. But I, I generally disagree with you and Rich Piana and anyone that's spoken on his behalf saying, He's not crazy vascular. He's not crazy hardened. Michael Hearn looks like a perfect fucking bodybuilder to me. That, that's just me personally. I don't know who you think is more perfect, but I'm going to tell you something else. You always talked about the reason you explore this topic is because you're curious to see what is the limit of what can be accomplished naturally. And in my opinion, it's you. I told you this. Like, I think like <laughs> you have great size. You have good vascularity. You have good cuts. So then the kind of the question becomes, you spend your life in the gym. You understand these things. You have a great build. You probably have good nutrition. Why can't you look like Mike O'Hearn? Like what's the, aside from genetics, what's, what's the missing variable? I mean, what should you put a bed in the fucking gym and, and live in there with, with that? You know what I mean? Like you <laughs> I'll already tell you do the missing variable, man. I'll, I'll tell you the missing variable. So basically, and, uh, and there's actually some similarity I'm going to share too, when I talk about environment. So mm -hmm. His dad basically was a natural bodybuilder, supposedly Patrick O'Hearn, and he brought Mike to the gym at 11. So by the time Michael, oh, by the way, this wasn't a normal gym. This was basically a gym that had powerlifting legends. This was a gym where dudes on the regular were deadlifting 800 pounds. He's talked about this. This wasn't like your 24 hour fitness where, you know, like a 315 pound squat actually looks pretty decent. Maybe someone goes to 405. But no one's putting five plates on anything. Whereas, like these dudes are warming up there. So, from his perspective, there's no limit. Like this is normal to him. Whereas, like for most of us, we see three fifteen, four of uh, you know, four five. It's like that's impressive. That's normal to us. Right. So he didn't have that limit. And I think this kind of helped me too in high school because I was so naive and I thought all these bodybuilders were like natural. I didn't really have limits, so I blew up like crazy. Like his story is. At 14, he competed in a, a teenage contest at 172. Like, that's crazy at 14. At 14, I wasn't even 100 pounds. So yeah. that's the difference right there. He's already got like 80 pounds on me at the same age. And he was like 5'9 uh, at 14. So basically in two years, he put on 100 pounds. But the funny thing is I pretty much put on 100 pounds in two years as well. So he was already about 260, 270 at 16. Well, I was pretty much like this weight uh, also at 16. 
So we both put on like almost a hundred pounds in two years, you know? And I think a lot of it just going through puberty, but also not having that limit thinking like, Oh, there, there's no limit. What would you can do up to a certain point, obviously. But if you right. think about it, if he was 16, so he basically spent the next 35 years maintaining that body weight, but just refining it, obviously adding some muscle, losing some fat and the conditioning is going to get better. Like I look better now than I did 10 years ago, body wise as a natural dude, like right. most guys at 30 are going to look better than they do at 40. But if you've been lifting that long, like the muscles just get harder. They look better. They look more defined. Obviously the diet plays in that too, but you get that muscle maturity. That's like a real thing. Yeah. I just, I don't know. To, to me, I think like when I look at you, that's kind of, that's, that's what a great natural physique looks like. I think that the one thing that guys that haven't tried a cycle before don't really understand is, and I just don't think you can until you do a cycle. You, you, you seem to have a, a decent understanding of, of that thing with the traps and the shoulders filling up. But the one thing I don't think anyone understands until they try a, a cycle is exactly the level of blood flow. And that level of blood flow that makes you look pumped at all times. Now, now granted, I could see you right now. Your veins are, on, they're visible. They're yeah, on they're the like surface. Yeah, they're like all the time, but. Yeah, they're visible. They're on the surface. But there is such a difference between your veins being like light below your skin. Like you can kind of see them. They kind of come out a little bit when you work out or they, they only come to the surface of the skin when you're pumped in the gym. And when you have blood constantly being pumped to your muscles. I mean, that's the number one thing we miss when we're off cycle is you wake up in the morning and you're pumped, you have sex and you're pumped. Even if you didn't go to the gym that day, you do any level of phys physicality and your muscles are constantly just being fed blood to that area. And, and when you, that is what we're chasing. So that's, that's my whole point in the natural versus steroid conversation. We have been shown that since we were kids, that's what we would, that would appeal to us about pumping iron. I'm that telling look. you, man, like, I think he figured it out through nutrition and diet. And, and I'll tell you why. And I have an example. I have eaten meals before and I've made comments to, you know, if I'm eating a meal with my wife or my brother or friend or whatever, like I have eaten a meal and felt like I just feel like I got out of the gym. Like meals I'm just with getting heavy salt from eating a meal, huh? Heavy carbs, heavy salt, something like that. Well, that's there, the there thing. Like I might eat, eat an that entire kind of pizza that's fucking carved and salted to hell and not get mm -hmm. pumped. Sometimes it's just like, I don't know what it is, man. And it's not like I've been depleted, but every once in a while I'll eat a meal and it's just like, I get pumped from it. And I think he basically had figured that out. Like if you watch videos where he tried to describe what he does with his diet and what he does with his carbs, like he's very pro carb, never cuts them used to do it. And he said, he felt like crap, but never cuts them. He eats a lot of carbs. It's like the way he's doing it. He keeps his metabolism high through diet by eating the right stuff at the right time. And that could probably, cause I've experienced that, man. It's a weird phenomenon where I swear to God, it's felt like I just got done doing, you know, like five sets of curls. I'm like eating Certainly. potatoes. And I'm just like, I f this to me, and I'll make the comment, like this would be like, I feel like I'm on steroids, even though I'm not like, I would think this would be the closest thing to me being on steroids, just being out of the gym and just fucking blown up, you know, for me, no, it's true. And, and when you're natural, you always do it accidentally. You're like, what was it that I ate? Or could I, could I work that into my regimen every day? Is, is it's about high salt is about high carbs. I think he's so unlocked the perfect ratio, man. It it's, it's possible. But like I said, you have no clue until you try it that you, you understand it. Once you try it, like me personally, when I saw bullet to the head, because I'm so young, that bullet to the head was like my youth, you know? I mean, uh, you're a little <laughs> yeah. older than me, so I don't know what your youth was for. It was for Rambo too, man. <laughs> it was Rambo too. Okay, so for me, I'm actually like fucking 15 when Bullet to the Head comes out, and Sly's veins in that movie, I'm like, that is the coolest look ever. He wasn't even like big, but he was just vascularity, like ropes going down from his bicep to his forearms. I'm like, I want that. And then I spent the next 10 years trying to figure that out. And I'm like, okay, it has a little bit to do with carbs. It has a little bit to do with salt and take it. It majorly has to do with being under 12, 10% body fat, maybe even more than that. So then for a long time, I, I learned about like pump versus leanness. And, it, and the answer is somewhere in between there. And I, I could send you pictures of, of me at my best natural and you can see some level of vascularity, but it comes and goes throughout the day. It does have to do with what you ate and does have to do with how frequently you're training your arms, because sometimes that just has to do with like the level of frequency in your training. How often are you hitting them? So is that just activity you're looking at? Like, is it just the level of activity that's keeping your arms looking like they're always active? But I, I would say I, I did everything I could. And there's times where I was like, I'm close to that look. 
on my recent cycle, I took a picture of me and I can send you this too. I took a picture of me in a similar polo shirt to what Sly wore that whole movie. For some reason, he's a killer that just wears a polo shirt the whole movie. <laughs> and that was it. I was like, this is the missing link. I had, I must have somehow forgotten that the look I was chasing was a, a look displayed by a guy that was on HGH at the moment, probably HGH and test at, at least, if nothing else, which is about as, as much as we know for a fact that Sly uses based on his own words. But I, I did everything I could to achieve that naturally. Once there was an an excess level of blood flow, it kind of became clear to me the all day versus vascularity versus certain times of the day based on what you ate on, on how you trained. And you just don't know until you have that level of blood flow. That's just always going. Yeah. That's crazy, man. That's gotta be like a drug. No, no but you, you're definitely, you're, you're definitely, feeling. I don't want to tell you you're right or wrong, but I definitely, I, I could see where you're coming from with the, the natural side of, of what can bring your veins more to the surface. But again, Take it from a guy who also like you was taking a natural approach to trying to look like a pro just blanking out of my mind that most of the pros I wanted to look, I wanted to look like had some assistance for that look and conditioning, which there's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just what it just is what it is. And the level of confusion when you grow up watching these guys and probably nearly all of them are on something, but they claim they're not, it really created this thing where what is the ideal natural physique. I can't tell you when I point to the industry, I want to say like, I could almost believe that maybe uh Wolverine, like his physique kind of reminds me of yours. I could oh, almost you buy, I could almost buy that. He might've been natural. It just I, almost, I don't even know for a fact, but I can almost kind of buy that. Cause his physique kind of reminds me of yours in some ways. Like the vascularity is dope, but it doesn't necessarily look like it's, it's, it's definitely from a cycle. He never held water. He just kind of looked like it could have been a natural cut, but I'm sorry. Mike O'Hearn is like, just, just take you or, or Hugh Jackman. And then Mike O'Hearn, that's the <laughs> size and the fullness as well. As okay. Nice so let, let's real quick though. So the drug tests, you know, it's interesting. So he was an original American gladiator. And a lot of those guys came out later and said they were like, you know, taking steroids and stuff. So he was bigger and stronger than all of them. And I think he was kind of guilty by association because some of those guys claim they were on stuff. There's, oh, well, this guy's got to be on stuff then because he's even more impressive than them. But here's the thing. When they rebooted it, NBC like tested for everything. He's like the only guy that passed, which is interesting. Plus, what year was this? I forget when the reboot was. We could look it up. We could look it up. You should definitely, when you post this, flash a picture of how he looked at that time. Yeah, we'll flash that. He was also in Battle Dome which was like an American gladiator ripoff. He was also in that, but here's the interesting thing. So you're talking four time Mr. Natural Olympia. And that was from the INBA. And I heard they actually test throughout the year. They don't randomly, they don't just do it. Like, you know, before the show, they could get you anytime and they'll do like blood and urine, and even polygraphs. So he didn't pass lie detector tests. Just remember, it's not a lie. If you believe it. So he's never felt a drug test various drug tests but a lot of other guys have okay okay well i mean i do think they know how to manipulate that a little bit they could come off right before they're tested I, i'm pretty sure people within the industry would tell you that I'm, I'm just saying that up front like could could be the case that that he was natural but he also could have manipulated it i just think more so than me being like right now me versus you on our theories to me the conversation's a lot bigger to me the conversation is if it just were the case that everyone who used steroids felt they could be honest about it. Like we had a society where it wasn't demonized and no one was going to lose their endorsement deals. And then everyone that was natural was honest about that. Also, we would have a clear comparison for what we're talking about, but to be completely honest with you, with how blurred it is, with how much of a secret it is. I don't know if either of us really have a, a complete idea of what we're talking about. Cause who could we point to? If only we could point to somebody that we could like have a middle grounds comparison for this. Like, oh, well, we know for a fact this guy that looks phenomenal. We know for a fact he was natural. But you can't say that when your only basis for thinking they're natural is that they said it. <laughs> yeah, no, but here's the thing, though. So this is more evidence. Yeah, I think longevity. So he's been around since the 90s. And I, you know, followed all the guys from the magazines back in that era. How come? And a lot of those dudes have died in their 40s and 50s. I'm not saying mm -hmm. steroids killed them. Maybe right. maybe it led to a heart attack among with some other contributing factors. But the thing is, even the guys that are alive who looked amazing, you're talking like Kevin Lavroni, Flex Willer, Dorian Yates. 
I mean, they all look okay. And then there's guys that look like crap. But nobody – how come Michael Hearn is the only guy that, that can maintain that, if not actually look better now? So to me, like, that's what a natural person they can do. They, they have the longevity and the consistency. Nobody else from that era looks like that, but he still looks perfectly fine. He's perfectly healthy. But not only that, with the longevity, and he even said this himself, like – steroids breaks down your connective tissue this dude's never been injured like a lot of bodybuilders have had to retire because they got injured you know like his body in the longevity is just telling me he's not taking stuff that steroids in my opinion like age you quicker like you could see it in the skin you could see it like his face hasn't changed either a lot of the guys who take these drugs their face structural structure changes he still got that perfectly chiseled model face. Now, nah, my my train of thought would be more so: How did he maintain it as he as he aged? And I would think it's at least a base level of TRT to maintain that level of muscle as you age. I would think that'd be the first thing to go as you get older. Uh, honestly, that level of size. I mean, even some of the best of the best have dropped down in size a little bit as they got older. You could use Sly for an example, but then again, he had some injuries. If you want to say that that affected his ability to maintain size, or you could look at somebody like Robbie Robinson, conveniently enough, who Michael Hearn trains with often has still really got some decent size for a dude, his age hey, and like still, <laughs> still has the arms and still has the peak, but he, he isn't as big as he was back in the day. And I even look at that and I'm like, you know, I, I don't know if aside from the, from, yeah, no, I even look at him and I'm thinking to myself, how it's at 70. At 70, it's at least got to be a TRT dose. That's just generally how these things work. The ability for the body to maintain more muscle than it, than it knows it needs. And also the way the body uh, can, can really cannibalize excess muscle if you don't have the most incredible diet in the world. But I guess that's kind of what you're arguing, that he's, he's got all that stuff figured out. I don't know. Do you, are you arguing that he could be natural? Or do you like believe to your core that he is natural? Well, when I came into this, I was going to more argue that he could be. He could be. But now I'm actually kind of thinking, I might be drinking the Kool-Aid, man. Oh, yeah. Kool-Aid here. But again, I want to tell the audience, like, I'm not naive, man. Like, I know guys who use shit. And I know they get bigger. I know they get stronger. Yeah. I mean, you know, they don't look anything like him, obviously, even though they're on stuff. But here's the thing. Genetics. He probably has higher than average testosterone levels. And I would assume there are certain people who um, their levels drop less than the general population sitting on the couch watching TV all day. Like, mm -hmm. also, you've got to think about there's probably a mild myostatin deficiency. Even Flex Wheeler said he has a myostatin deficiency. So even though Flex Wheeler was an ectomorph, he put on muscle easy. Obviously, he still used, you know, drugs to get even bigger. Mm -hmm. But there is that genetic component where Michael Hearn, and he's talking about like just his physique aesthetically, Genetically, the bone structure, probably higher testosterone, probably mild, you know, myostatin deficiency, probably all these factors starting at a young age at 11. Remember, the dude at 14, like, was basically my size now. And I got this size, like, at 16. But again, mm -hmm. he, he got to where he is now at 16, you know? He didn't look like that, but he got, like, just that big amount of mass. Yeah. Okay, so now you're drinking the Kool-Aid. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't, I don't believe that he's natural. Just, I don't, I don't believe that the most perfect, in my opinion, the most perfect looking bodybuilder in the business, both size wise and aesthetically and being at his age is natural because it always gets chalked up to the genetic freak example, which I got a funny, funny as hell Mary defense about that in a second. It, well, it, that, but that's what all it always comes down to it always comes down to the genetic freak um, argument. The, well, the see, genetic it, freak it, it, it's a combination though, because there's, so, you know, you know who Kevin Lebroni is, right? No. Well, he was like one of the best bodybuilders in the 90s. He, he made a comeback a few years ago in his 50s, but he was one of the best bodybuilders in the 90s, you know, outside of like Dorian Yates and Flex Wheeler and those guys. Top okay. level guy, amazing physique. He actually n has known Michael Hearn for 30 years. And he said, I actually think Michael Hearn's natural. And this is a dude, obviously, that knows the industry because he takes shit, openly admits it. Okay. Now, right. he doesn't take a crazy amount. He says, his genetics, I don't have to take these crazy doses. I, I take enough, and uh, and I could compete. I could get ready for a show in four months. The funny thing is, he's like, I don't know if he's still in a band, but what he would do, he would literally look like me. You know, I, actually softer, not even as good as me at 180. And then before a show, about four months, he would get on all his shit, and then he would blow up to like 230, 240, look like, you know, a crazy-ass bodybuilder. 
But the rest of the year, he honestly wouldn't even look as good as me in his 180s. You know, but anyway, he actually thinks Michael Hearn is natural because of consistency. And everybody says, like, regardless of what you say about him, this dude is in the gym at 4 a.m. every morning. He never skips meals. He never, like, does anything detrimental to his reaching, like, what he's trying to do, which, as you said, is, like, literally the perfect ultimate physique. Yeah. Now, think about a guy who's done that for 40 years and never has, like, probably even taken a day off. It's no, sure, it helps. It's the hard work. It's the perfect diet. It's on top of the genetics. So just the genetics alone aren't going to do it, even though a lot of people like to make that argument. It's like, even if you take shit genetics, if you had his work ethic, his diet, his consistency, you'll probably look a lot better than a guy with great genetics who kind of, you know, doesn't take it nearly as seriously. And it, no, and nobody's arguing that the, the cat doesn't work hard. I mean, I know that the hard work and the genetics played into, a lo- played into it a lot. Again, we don't have a level playing field for understanding what a pure genetic freak looks like because we always want to point in that direction. I, I like, think oh, we do it, Ronnie Coleman. No, Ronnie, I, no, no, Ronnie's talked about taking stuff. Yeah, that's the thing. And there's a lot of people that think he might have been natural up to a point. Like, I honestly think when he was placing in the team. That's what, no, that's what he said. He said that. I think if you want to go what? based on their word, if you want to trust their word, we're playing the game of, of trusting people's word here. But yes, Ronnie has said that, that he was natural up until a certain point. Uh, as well as C.T. Fletcher. I was actually just listening to that the other day. He said there was just a point. He might have been 21 years old or so, and he did some tests and some DECA, and then that was it. And and the rest of it was just – that's just – I mean, and you've seen him looking pretty sizely in his 50s before his heart attack and everything. So that – you 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 could lean that way. What I always tend to wonder, though, and this is just like a genuine curiosity. It's not a diss or anything. I know you, and then shout out to my my boy Fit to be King, uh, Fit, Fit to be King uh, Les Billingley, who I just did a movie with. He subscribes to you also. You are like my two – friends that I look to that I'm like, these are like the best looking natural cats I've ever seen. And then, but then sometimes no disrespect to either of you, I think to myself, but like, what more could they possibly do? The training is fucking perfect. That's it's their life. What more could you possibly do to prove that? Like you could get to that next level and look a little closer to a Mike O'Hearn naturally. I mean, and, and then when you have the genetic argument, do you think you have shit genetics? You're fucking 40. You look like you're 20. You know what I mean? Like you think you have I mean, bad genetics. genetics? Are- pretty good it's they're a probably pretty genetics, fucking but... they're probably pretty good right so and training is your life do you think there's an area of of your training that you slack in that prevents you from looking like arnold schwarzenegger no see i my problem was i wasn't even 100 pounds at 14 dude like i knew guys who were fucking 10 years old who were like 180 190 like if i had that to work with with what i've done with the diet and the training and the consistency I couldn't imagine what I'd look like. These guys were naturally fucking my size now. Now, obviously, they didn't look like this aesthetically, but they were 10 years old, like 180. It's just like, I was like 70 pounds, man, at 10, probably less than 100 at 14. Well, I'm just I think- saying if I had like a bigger natural frame, I would probably, I mean, look a lot closer to Michael Hearn than I do now. You know? Well, what I think what we know for a fact is I don't think even you would argue. I think we know for a fact what, what we have in our mind is like the levels of roid use versus uh, natural bodybuilders is I don't think either of us or anybody would argue, even the natural cats that want to assume everybody's natural would argue that there's a level of like a Dorian Yates, a Rich Piana, a Jay Cutler, a Kai Green, and I think everybody's pretty much all in agreement here. There's just about no fucking way in hell that those guys are natural, right? Like, so I think everybody's kind of got that, you know, both from the ones that have admitted it and both that haven't. I think we all kind of look at that and we're like, okay, that's what Roy use looks like. But you take a cat like Michael Hearn, who's significantly smaller compared to that. And now we're on a little bit more of the believable side of the spectrum where we're like, okay, it could be because he doesn't look like the big 300 pound elephants because it's a little bit more of a classic physique. But then you have to take into account everybody's personal genetics and trust their word, essentially, because everybody's genetic limit is different. I don't know if if what I'm looking at right now is your genetic limit, uh, limit. I don't think I even know what my genetic limit is by playing with steroids. I've... I've more so diluted my own perception of what my genetic limit is. I know how much I've trained natural versus how much I've trained on cycles. I've trained natural longer than I've cycled, but the perception of what the genetic limit is and what's possible without roids is is so skewed. It makes it very, very difficult to narrow it down. It really, really does. Yeah. No, I mean, people won't, you know, reach their genetic limit naturally. Probably. I mean, obviously the gains will slow, but you know, 10 solid years, 
And, you know, so it's just like, how many people stick with it that long? They might be on it. I've known guys who've been in and out of the gym. Oh, I've, you know, they work out for a couple of years and they'll take it off and then they'll come back. But someone who's stuck with it for like 10 years to kind of at least get an idea of what their genetic limit is. Most people have no idea. Like who's going to stick with it that long. Right. And then maybe right. if they want to take something like you have, or a lot of other guys, or maybe they fall off and come back. So it's hard to determine what the genetic limit, but here's the thing too, that, um, also why he could be natural. I mean, if you think about finding success. So I think Joe Weider approached him like when he was 20, 21 to get on covers of magazines. Now, obviously mm -hmm. he had more to do than just his physique. He's got a, just a good look. I mean, that's why he's on romance novel covers, right? Cause yeah. he's got like a model look that helps too. But basically finding that success that early. And he's even said this, it's like, um, you know, I realized whatever I've been doing up to that point was good enough. So it's like, why would I need to take shit? Like I'm already making a living. I'm in magazines, like, and I've done this shit naturally. Let's say he was naturally up to 2021 20, when he got into muscle and fitness. It's like, why do I have to take stuff? I'm already finding success here. So there's that. And he's also, he's also, it's the attitude, man. He's openly talked about. So he's like the youngest of nine children. And he openly admitted like two of his brothers and one of his sisters used steroids. But okay. he had the attitude that like, I'm going to do it without the steroids. And I, and I've known people with that attitude. Like I kind of had that attitude to a certain degree too. It's like, you almost want to prove that something could be done. And like, I was even talking to, uh, this huge monster bouncer guy, I had him on the channel, Wyatt, and he's literally got like the world's heaviest dumbbell and he's like a natural power lifter. And he has that attitude is like, well, if everyone's telling me I can't do this shit, well, I want to prove him wrong. And he's got like a 450 pound dumbbell that he's like doing rows with, you know, naturally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he, Michael Hearn's got that attitude. He's like that F you attitude. You say, I can't do it. I'm going to F and do it. I don't know. But when you put it like that, I would think there's no reason not to. And, and first of all, when you go back to the Joe Weider era and you go back to the classic era of bodybuilding, I guess that came a little bit before him, but you know, there was a point where steroids were legal and more socially acceptable than they are now. And then somewhere along the line we had, it might've been in the nineties or the late eighties, but at a certain point there was the sports cheating issue where the demonization of steroids was born. So once you take the demonization of steroids into the mainstream and to the consciousness of the public, now we have a totally different conversation. But when it's applied to the sports world, I don't think there's as much reason for guilt, as much reason to think that it doesn't mean you're, you're performing at your best because it's, it's a different thing. If you're within that business or you're, you're within bodybuilding and you're competing in shows where it is okay for you to take steroids, then it, it creates a different thing because the demonization part of it isn't quite there. It, again, it still could exist with you losing endorsements or being on the cover of magazines for PR reasons, but are you cheating morally when you take steroids? That, be, that kind of became the thing. Once that was the thing, now there's an incentive to train naturally because if you don't, you're the you're the cheater you're the guy that that couldn't do it naturally and then what does that say about who you are naturally without assistance well that says you aren't shit but if you go back to the classic days with the arnold and rick drayson and joe weeder and lou ferrigno that discussion wasn't there so they were just doing what they do you want to be this fucking big and this cut this is what you do to get there so none of this existed and even when arnold admitted to taking steroids that was his discussion was well, yeah, but I mean, first of all, at the time it was legal and we knew that's just what you do for competition. It became a, it became a different thing once it was demonized. So it was that people forget that it was not always demonized and it wasn't always illegal once it was. And then once Congress got involved with the fucking baseball players, yeah, the baseball that show. that's what created our current attitude about it. Well, here's something interesting about Arnold, though, man, like as great genetically he is and as gifted. Have you seen like a lot of the pictures when he was younger, when he was off cycle, like between competitions? I don't know if they're off cycle pictures or not. They I've gotta seen... be, man. He really was pretty soft looking, not really that impressive. So that's the thing. It's like, I've seen the impressive ones of him when he was young. Yeah, sure. But Michael Hearn has that consistent look all the time. He, Arnold in his prime, even between Olympias, never had that. And that's good for Arnold. I don't think he should be on year round, right? Like, <laughs> especially if he's not competing. I think he only right. really competed once a year in the Olympia. So, I mean, just the consistency, like natural people have that, you know, and it's not so far fetched. Somebody could look that amazing at 50. Cause I remember back in the day at my gym, uh, my 24 hour fitness in California, 
and I have no reason to believe this woman wasn't natural. She was like um, some kind of like Japanese figure competitor, whatever. But anyway, she was 50 years old. Nobody in the gym believed it. She looked like she was 30. Mm-hmm. Amazing, beautiful physique. Not like overly big, not overly cut, but just really good looking aesthetic. And she was 50. And she looked young. Like like Michael Hearn's got young looking skin. He's got young looking hair. He's, he's kind of, you know, like I said, steroids from what I've seen, like tends to age people and burn them out a little quicker. Well, than, uh, see what, what my perception of it is, is your perception of Michael Hearn is because he was natural. He was able to always look good and always maintain my perception is because of the hard work and genetics, but also his extreme knowledge of how to use steroids properly. He was able to always look consistent. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. That's also what I think about a cat, like uh, like a Greg Doucette, Greg Doucette always looks good. And he's on TRT and is admitted he to looks, huge he looks cycles. Okay. He looks okay. <laughs> he's no Michael Hearn, but <laughs> well, no, but let's say, but let's just say on a consistency level, on a consistency about every time you pull up a YouTube video, that cat looks the same. And he and he's looked great throughout the years. I I that's my perception of it. My perception of it of it is not that he doesn't work hard, not that he doesn't have good genetics, either of those guys, but I attribute it not to a great understanding of how to manipulate the body through diet a great understanding of how to manipulate the cycles to always have that progressive change throughout the years, get, get, getting better in terms of getting better, but to also maintain somewhat of the same look to not get sloppy with it. Even I get sloppy with it. If any of you guys go and check out my show, the adventures of save ho I'm fucking like two size big, two sizes bigger than I am right now. Cause I'm a fucking idiot, but I'm also an actor. So I prioritize cycles more when I have a project than when I'm just kicking it with Viking samurai. I won't look you know huge again until another three, four weeks at the moment. Okay, but not everybody get but I'm saying not everybody gets gets sloppy with it. And there are people that have a especially people in the business, you would think, right, have a phenomenal understanding of how to manipulate these drugs to get the best out of them. And then to also keep a consistency between the time that they're off and the time that they're on. It's also huge in the business to have blasting and cruising, which is just maybe you have a giant cycle and then you're supposed to come off and let your body recover. But instead of coming off, you just drop it from your four compounds down to test, just test. And then that way you don't have this rebound where your natural testosterone has to be spiked, uh, which is what happens to me pretty often. I mean, I'll be two sizes bigger and then I come down and I I fuck up my pre site or my post cycle. And now I'm small again for a small period of time. Here's a question then. Okay. Let's say, well, obviously you think he's on stuff. When do you think he got on stuff then? Like, you think he honestly got on shit when he was in high school? Cause he gained a hundred pounds from 14 to 16. Or do you think but, he got on stuff like, well, to be honest with you, I haven't followed him throughout his life, but I would doubt that he was as sizely as he is right now when he was a kid. I'm sure he still looks pretty damn good for his age, but I, I we talk about a consistency with the way his, his physique looks, but he had to have gotten bigger. He was definitely not the size he is right now at the time that you're talking about. No, right? just the weight, but not the size. Okay. Just the weight. So I couldn't. I haven't studied pictures of him enough to to make an assumption on that, but you know certainly, you know you can make your ass- assumptions of how much muscle you can maintain. You know at you know forty five, fifty, sixty. Most of it does not get done without at least a, a small TRT dose, and that's just to maintain. You know it's very very hard to maintain a frame like that. I think the first thing actually to go on a man seems to be his shoulders. And guys oh, really? with big I would shoulders, legs, man, them older dudes ain't got leg, no, legs. No, yeah, yeah, I would then, then yes, then legs and shoulders. I've definitely noticed that even guys that have been able to maintain uh, like a decent bicep peak and decent triceps or decent definition in their arms, decent chest, um, you know, legs and shoulders seem to dwindle a bit. So, I, I'd say goes. the triceps, man, when people get older. I've, Tri- I've seen, you think, triceps, you seen triceps just go? like disintegrate on people. Disintegrate? That could be due to injury too. A lot of guys fucking chop them up. <laughs> you know, early on in the day No, but that's, yeah, I, I can't change my argument on this, on this well, one. That's definitely here's a question point. though. Like, why do you think he would have went out of his way? Cause like I said, it was more unspoken, especially like in muscle and fitness and flex and Iron Man and everything, at least in the nineties, mid nineties. Why do you, why do you think he would go out of his way to kind of like almost make fun at the other guys and say, they should do it naturally. Like me, like, why would he go out of his way? Cause he's like, why not crazy. just say nothing? Yeah. Cause he's fucking crazy. No, I don't mean that, but no, but I, I don't know. I always, the, anytime I've seen that from Mike O'Hearn, I've always, I, I didn't know if it was a deflection or he was so hell bent on maintaining this reputation 
of the unbelievable natural guy because it's a hell of a title to uphold if it's actually true or if you can make the public believe it. Like I said, there's the base level of making sure you don't lose any of your money or any of your endorsements or you don't say, hey, you know, I do take a little bit of test and DECA. And then one of the companies that's paid you a shit ton of money to be the, the face of their company wants to drop you. So that's the base level of a reason why not to admit in fucking our society sure. that you take steroids. But then the I think it's overreaching to point out, you know, to, to really give a, a long, I've seen him give long explanations for why he's not taken, why he's never done a cycle and then pointing out other people that, Oh, they should do it natural. I, I think. It's well, like, he was I pointing that shit out in the nineties. See now is different. If he's pointing it out, I'm talking about like in the nineties where no one was even bringing that shit up, but he was like, kind of almost like talking about it back then, like, because he was really proud to be the natural guy. Cause I think being in that industry, you've probably seen all these guys, taking this shit and you know in general it's it's less healthy than healthy and he's probably like hey man i could do it naturally you guys should be doing it too yeah my question for you is if you take the stigma and the shame and the idea of it being uh cheating morally if you were to take all that out of the discussion is this still just your assessment you know i know i know in particular you don't shame steroid users but like, i don't really give a shit about the moral argument like i used to when i was in high school it's you, like, you just oh, like talking about bad. now like I, I could give a shit if somebody takes them like honestly there's way there's you know cigarettes or alcohol that destroy people that is legal i'd rather someone if they're passionate about the gym and they've been doing it for a while not like some idiot that just signs up and doesn't even know how to work out and they're gonna like start shooting themselves it's like no right, do right. this shit for a few years learn the, what the hell you're doing and then if you want to uh take things up a notch you know maybe try it out but right. not just right out the gate so i wouldn't demonize it or anything you know like some other stuff that is legal is way worse for you so the moral thing i don't really have an issue with i used to a long time ago but that was because i was like anti-drug everything you know see i i would think it established it establishes the same argument if michael hearn were to say yes I cycle on and off or I have taken steroids throughout my career. To me, it still simulates the same argument. And that argument is, and you still can't look like me. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm on, uh, I'm going to be going on tests, DECA and Masteron. I'll get bigger for me, but I will probably never in my life, no matter how much roids, how much I got my diet in check, how much I train, I will probably never look like him. So I still think it simulates the same argument of if he were to admit he takes roids, it'd be like, yeah, you know, I cycle like everyone else in the business. And you fuckers still can't look like me because there's more to it. There's my genetic capability and how hard I work and how well I know how to cycle and my own cycle theory, which would trump the fuck out of anybody else's. So I think it's the same argument personally. Well, the argument at the end of the day, like you said, whether he is on stuff or not at the end of the day, like people can't look like that. No, you can't like, look it, like it, him. Even if you take steroids, you just can't. And you can't get as strong as that. Like it so that's already an accomplishment. You don't have to go out of your way to say, and I'm natural as far as I'm <laughs> and that's concerned. Why I, think I don't. Well, see, the thing that I think pisses a lot of people off, it's not so much that he's kind of like sticking his tongue out on him and saying like, oh, uh -huh. I could do all this and I'm natural. It's more like I think people are pissed off because they want the world to make sense. And if he's natural, it doesn't fucking make sense to a lot of people, especially if somebody is just they don't want to think like they have to take all this stuff and they do take all this stuff to look a certain way that's good for them. If they know that somebody looks so much better who's not taking anything. I think it pisses him off. And I think it, the world doesn't make sense. The fitness world doesn't make any sense to them. So he no, has to take stuff. Doesn't piss me off. I just think it, it would make the most sense if he's on something. It doesn't even need to be a, a large amount of gear. It doesn't need to be a four compound cycle. It just needs to be, it would make more sense to me than not. If he was yeah, at least you want on the world to make sense. I mean, you want it to make sense is what I'm saying. Cause it just doesn't make sense for most people. Well, but here, here, check yeah. out my hell Mary defense and go ahead, go ahead. I'm half serious, but maybe half joking but maybe not like this shit might be real and it kind of ties into the genetic component a little bit okay so all right he grew up on a farm right kind of like away from people okay and you'll often see him like in a superman shirt or a costume right and a lot of people joke and says he has like alien dna and he kind of goes with that too he'll even post up videos or even reference that but have you ever heard of the nordic alien race are you about to get conspiratorial in this? Dude, like he literally could be one of these Nordic aliens. And oh, shit. that's a real thing. You got to look it up. You could Google it. I want to, we should add Greg Doucette to the call. But but essentially real quick, these Nordics, they're basically described as being six to seven feet tall, blue eyes, blonde hair, physically beautiful. So 
just taking the genetic argument to the extreme, he may not even be human. He might be an alien, like for real. There are legit sightings, dude. So do you, have you heard of Travis Walton from the Fire in the Sky movie? Uh, no. So he got abducted in 1975 and he's passed. He's the guy that life. went on Joe Rogan telling that story. Yeah, he was on Joe okay. Rogan even recently, but he got abducted in 1975 and he claimed there were several different alien races on that ship, including the Nordics, who essentially look like Nordic Scandinavian people, except, you know, the extreme model, pretty beautiful, perfect versions of them. So yeah. he actually, um, he passed lie detector tests. Everybody who's seen him get abducted, like his coworkers, passed lie detector tests. So I think the Nordic alien race is real. They're from the Pleiades star system, if you want to look it up. But he might be a freaking alien in real life. Well, hey, man, I've uh, I've listened to as much David Icke as anybody before they took him offline. But um, I hope, Mike, I hope you're watching. Uh, I think you're full of shit. And Viking Samurai thinks you are an alien. <laughs> so this is fucking this See, is that makes sense to me. Like, I could no. See I think, first the- of all, all right. All right. What is this dude's uh, nationality to start? I, I would think he's probably got some kind of Northern European, right? Because he's tall, he's blonde, he's blue eyed. He's got to be yeah. like, I don't know if he's Swedish or Norwegian or or what. He's got to have like yeah, some kind I, of Nordic I genes. definitely buy the superb genetics part of it. It's a very tired argument, but I buy it in relationship to him. I, I definitely do, you know, because genetically he does look fantastic. You can, you can tell his his structure was great before he developed a great talent for, for building up his body even further. So I'm, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm down with that. I'm down with whether it's, it's fucking alien or his, his ancestry <laughs> is just out of this world. I'm with it. I'm, I'm definitely with that. He's definitely, he's definitely not a guy that didn't have the right frame and the right structure for bodybuilding, but then learned how to develop his body good because whether you at that point learn how to develop your body good or you're introduced to steroids, it really doesn't change shit genetics i mean i have decent genetics but like i don't have good ab genetics and i've got big love handles and all that so like that would scrap me right out of the game you know and there's a lot of guys that are built like that too so i'm down with that i'm down with that part of it yes that that dude has phenomenal genetics and then a phenomenal talent that he built on top of it i just don't think he's natural videos by the way like yeah, training, training videos, videos are good they give me some good for instagram tips. he does exercises a different way than other people so let's just go with the what we can consider as close to perfect as you can get, whether it's actually aliens or just human DNA, let's say as close as you could get to perfect genetics with the consistency, the hard work, the diet, like I mentioned, maybe he's manipulating in a certain way where I talk about getting pumped just from eating meals. Maybe he's doing that shit 24 seven. So he actually looks jacked on steroids all the time because he's pumped from his high carb diet. So he's got the perfect diet. He's got um, just, everything he's doing perfectly like he's sleeping enough he's eating the perfect foods in the right ratios he's training never missing a day lifting heavy weights so if 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 there's one guy who does everything exactly right and better than other people even the way he does his lifts with the mind muscle connection and all that and he's got superior genetics like why can't he be the one guy that has achieved that because like you said even guys who take shit don't look like him. So it's just as feasible and realistic that he could be natural and look like that. Cause guys who take shit can't even do that. Everything needs to be put in the proper context. We would need to scale him up against the guy that also has superb genetics because a guy that, because we agree that this guy's got superb genetics and that's, and I would say argument. Ronnie Coleman, when he was placed in like 13th or whatever in the Olympia was basically like that. He wasn't winning the Olympia, but he looked insanely good. Kind of a different type of physique, but yeah, if what he says is true, then he can be the natural for a while. Yeah, so he, he him and Michael Hearn could have kind of been like the same uh, type, more or less. I don't know, man. It's it's hard to experiment with, and it's hard to find the proper context for the argument. I think we should – I think, look, Mike's had his eye on you for a minute. Hopefully he watches this. I think he should tell you what his routine is. You're getting ready to do movies. I just finished the movie. I should come out there with my videography team, and we should put you through like – two months worth of documented footage of you training like him. Cause you already trained great as, <laughs> he as was it bo- is. how our bodybuilding routine. <laughs> Dude, eat, yeah. Eat <laughs> what take he me the eats, next level. Eat what he eats. Train how he eat. Train how he trains. And <laughs> let's see what the, let's see what the fuck could be done. 
take it to the next I, level. I don't man. know. It involves some experimentation at this point because every everybody fucking lies. So it puts us in this it puts us in this position where, where the whole industry of liars has definitely created a lot of room for speculation. Now, again, me being pro steroid makes it a different kind of speculation. I'm just trying to see what makes sense. I'm not like a Greg Doucette. I'm not like a cat that like wants to shit on people for not being natural. <laughs> yeah. I just or I just want to I'm just curious to see genetics versus uh, cycle use versus good diet and, and, and all the rest of it. And that guy, my final comment will still be, I don't think he's natural because in my mind, Mike O'Hearn is one of the most perfect looking men in the world. No fucking homo. He's just a perfect looking dude. And I think in the same way, if most people consider like a Kim Kardashian to be a perfectly built woman, I mean, she's not, she didn't achieve that perfect build naturally either. I mean, generally the most, perfect looking genetic specimen it may have a little bit of the genetics going for them but they have some enhancement also and why wouldn't they when you consider their industry and the money that's on the table and also what's acceptable within the realm of their sport uh, to me I, I really think it always comes back to you're a, a nice guy you don't shit on people for steroid use you don't you know we're friends and you don't shit on me for steroid use but I, I think there will always be a little bit of that that sort of perspective within a natural person to think like, no, 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 you don't really need this shit. You could do it naturally. And uh, I don't think you can not Mike O'Hearn style. I think maybe you could, obviously you could look like some, something close to you or something close to like a Hugh Jackman. There's a few guys in the industry that I'm like, it's possible. Maybe like a Jason Statham, you know, you could look like Jason Statham. Oh, I I would, you yeah. You could look like Jason Statham. I yeah. would say, I would say the Superman uh, in the movies, Henry Cavill is a great looking natural. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying I'm trying to think there's there's guys that I see from time to time that I'm like, I, I could kind of buy it. I also take certain lifestyle things into account, though, too. You know, if you take you take like a, I know John Claude Van Damme's your boy and, and he had a serious coke problem for, for a problem <laughs> for a while. And then part of me says, like, if you would take coke, but why wouldn't you take, you know, steroids for for a movie you're getting paid, you know, millions for? So I, I don't know. I just I just try to I just try to look at it like that. And I don't care either which way. I think steroids are phenomenal. I, I do. I think they're great. I'd be on and off of my whole life, probably. I mean, what I'll, my closing argument, I'll just say um, if you take everything I brought up, no side effects, pass all the drug tests, perfect nutrition, perfect training, consistency, perfect genetics, you know, the attitude, the environment he grew up in when people are like deadlifting 800 pounds. I, oh, that's normal. Like, of course, you're going to put up crazy numbers yourself if you see everybody doing that when you're a kid, right? Because that's that's your normal. I think he had just the perfect environment he grew up in. And when he started, if his father is already like a natural lifter, his father is already going to show him things to do. He's not going in there like, um, you know, a typical 11-year-old or 14 when I started. I mean, luckily, I had my older brother show me stuff. But I'll, I'll see high school kids in my gym yeah, all the time. Your brother looks great, they, by the way, also. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. But but I'll see high school kids in my gym all the time, and I'm just like, they don't know what the hell they're doing. They're sloppy mm -hmm. as hell. They, 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 their routine's all over the place. It's just, so he basically from the get-go, you know, had proper instruction. Uh, so all those factors considered, and the way he looks, not just body-wise, but just how he's aged so gracefully, he's had no injuries. I would give him the benefit of the doubt, and say it makes more sense to me that he's actually natural than not with maybe he's also an alien. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Hey man. I, I mean, he probably wants to keep that a secret, but I don't know if people are going to take that serious. I'm half joking, half serious on it though. I think he's a Nordic alien. Could be. So look Could that be. up sometime on a uh, Google or Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friend, it was great as always. If anybody wants to catch me, find the adventures of save a ho channel. I play an action hero who actually saves hoes from danger. Somebody's so, got to do it. So go and check that out. You'll see a little bit of my roided out physique in that. And uh, we, we try to, we do real fight scenes and then the whole bit. So, yeah, the thing is, can you save hoes without roids though? Or is that like a prerequisite? Hey, you know, it helps. It helps. <laughs> it definitely, definitely a little DECA helps. Okay. Certainly. Yeah. It's a tough job, man.